Is a will you marry me in your future? Or maybe you do it all over again. Hi, I'm Brian Toon with Jewelry Design Center, inviting you to come see the largest selection of will you marry me in the state of Montana. The brightest diamonds of every shape and size, unique settings built to last, and skilled jewelers on site offering free sizing and maintenance for life because that's how long we want to be your jeweler. Jewelry Design Center in Missoula, on Brooks, across from the Montana Club. All right, uh, great to be back in here on a Monday, normal week. Um, for us, as we began our preparation this morning for Utah Tech, but you know, I think reflecting back on, on Saturday's game, um, much like I thought after the game, there was there was going to be plenty of things within that that game that we could correct. Um, you know, certainly, uh, New Mexico made uh, made their fair share of plays to contribute uh, to what the score got to be. Um, but but ultimately, you know, as we got in that fourth quarter, we scored right at the beginning of the fourth quarter, cut it to ten, cut it, you know, made it a two score game. I think we felt like at that point it was within reach. And, uh, you know, what we needed is uh, we need to make some plays from that point forward. And, and we did that. Um, there was a few plays that they didn't make on the flip side. We certainly didn't make them all in the fourth quarter. Um, but but ultimately, you know, with with the big, big play uh, on Adams run, you know, I think we we're right around five at that point. Uh, now down three. I think everybody on our sideline felt like, OK, here we go. And I would guess there was some, some doubt creeping in on, on their side. And. That's just the way this game game goes, and unfortunately, the defense was able to get the ball back for the offense. And uh, you know that, that two minute drive that our offense put together um, with a timeout in hand, um, you know, got I think only in the one third down through that whole stretch, um, maybe two at the end. I guess it was two. You know, we made big plays on those third downs. Uh, was really impressive. That's you practice those situations a lot. I think uh, when you have a quarterback like Tommy that's been in been in a few of those situations through the course of his career, uh, the moment certainly wasn't too big for him, and um, you know, he executed real well. We had some guys on the other end of those those catches, uh, certainly that uh, those throws that made some good catches, and then you know, offensive line wise, we we stood up to a lot of pressure through that stretch, and um, ultimately got it down there. And you know, uh, first and goal, uh, we'd hoped to preserve a little bit more time than we did, but ultimately we scored in that play. We still had a timeout in hand. So, you know, it was great to get that touchdown and get the extra point to make it a four point game. And, and ultimately just have to play a couple more snaps of defense after that. So extremely uh, pleased with the outcome. Um, and I, I think our guys took a good look at it this morning. I know our coaches did as we went through things yesterday. And, and uh, again, I understand that there's a lot to improve upon and, you know, that's really what we need to see out of this week is, is a step forward. Uh, we have another opponent in Utah Tech that there's a lot of uncertainty, even though we played them last year. Um, that's a lot of games ago, and, and for them, it's a, a lot of different players, uh, a new coach, um, a new coaching staff, and obviously we're going to their place this year, so a new environment this game will be played in. So, you know, we got to really focus on what we can do to get better while Again, predicting to some degree what we think Utah Tech will do in, in this game on on Saturday night. Uh, another game where we'll be dealing with uh, the elements. I think it'll be probably 90 plus at 8 o'clock on, on Saturday night. Um, so I, I appreciate how our guys did work through that this past Saturday. And you know, we'll need to do that again down in St. George. So with that, I'll open up for questions. You mentioned or uh, you talked about it kind of being low off guard with some of the plays. How much do you think not um, New Mexico being kind of so uncertain going in, how much did that play a factor, especially in the start? You know, honestly, I think the start, not much. Um, the, the the pressure that they brought when they got the sack, fumble was something we prepared against. We didn't get off quickly enough on the interior. Um, Tommy hang on, hung on to the ball a little too long and ultimately they made that play. I think where, you know, when things shifted a little bit was the, their drive before the half when they went to that uh, that bigger personnel package on offense. Um, I know that uh, was a two-play sequence. They ran the ball for, I think, a significant gain, and then the quarterback pulled it. They went back to that a few times in the second half. I think ultimately that that heavier package, what they did, we did stop them. 
Um, we got attacked for a loss, which created a longer field goal in the fourth quarter. But that was one thing that they had shown. I think ultimately how much pressure they brought as the game went along. You know, it was it was pressures that they'd shown going back in time, but it wasn't maybe at that frequency. So I think we adjusted uh, fairly well. I think the things that went against us, again, were uh, unfortunate things that we are doing at times. And then they made some plays. I, I know the passes downfield when we get pass interferences, that's nothing scheme wise. It was poorly played balls in the air by a couple of our guys. Um, you know, so you just. It's, it's a handful of things that go on both sides. And ultimately, you know, we, again, find ourselves down 17 right away after the play in the second, the beginning of the second half, the, the scoop and score. And, um, you know, for our defense to ultimately not give up any points in the second half, now they moved it a little bit. Um, I think that's something we didn't talk much about uh, after the game on Saturday. That was obviously pretty significant. They missed a couple of field goals and, and really the wind picking up and really changing some of the dynamics of the, the game, the passing game. You know, I, I think we're chasing points, but it was really hard to throw through a stretch. Um, obviously, their second missed field goal, I put that on the wind entirely. Um, so, yeah, it was an interesting, interesting game in a lot of ways. But ultimately, the newness piece, you know, I think played a role, but wasn't really significant. And Tommy Red didn't run, you know, nearly as much as he has almost every game of his career. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of just hands off on, on reads. Was it? As simple as a lot of reads, or was there any kind of design to not run up too much? Well, I think, it, you know, we're looking at a 12-game a regular season right now. Um, I think we're going to be a little bit more selective uh, when we choose to run him. You know, with the amount of, of read uh, game that we do have in our run game, um, you know, a defense can, can dictate that at times. Um, you know, and if that means the ball – is going to the running backs more often than it's in his hands. I, I think that's, we're fine with that. So I think that would be an intentional thought. I you know even his touchdown run really should have been Adam running it. It was a high snap. Uh, I think Adam scores a little bit easier than Tommy had to score on that play, but you know, um, yeah, we will need to use his legs from time to time, but the volume I, I think isn't going to be what we've seen in the past. And you talked about that two minute drive. I Pies catch right before to set up uh, that Scott Trey run into the end zone. Can you talk about his ability to make that catch? Yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, there's two ends to that. I think Tommy, while maybe early in the game, um, was getting out of the pocket at times and, and not continuing to see things. I think as that game went along, he did a much better job. And on that that play, and there was a couple in that, that sequence, you know, he hung in there. Um, you know, Ty sat down like he should. Uh, Tommy put a, a catchable ball in his vicinity. It was closely guarded, so the ball brought Ty down like he, I'm sure, Tommy intended. And, you know, we needed to make that play. And, and that's, you know, that's why Ty's out there is to, to make those catches. So, you know, um, getting that ball inside the five, that was a third down. How we would have, you know, treated fourth down there would have been depended on the distance. Quite frankly, I think we were close enough where we're kicking a field goal and tying the game up was an option. But, you know, I, I, I'm glad that we were able to make that play and ultimately win the game in regulation. Yeah, we also heard that Ty kind of had a half time to meet for the guys. Can you just talk about um, his leadership and how it's even maybe taken a step up uh, this season? Yeah, I, that, was, that was somewhere in between when I had gone in there. Um, but Ty's a really fierce competitor. And, you know, I think Ty coming here to Montana State, um, you know, a lot of it had to do with his competitive spirit as much as he was motivated to, you know, catch passes and all that kind of thing. Like, Ty wanted to win. And, you know, um, he's a he's a fiery competitor that I think what was evolved in him, and it is in most of our transfer guys that are multiple year guys, you know, they turn the page in the year two, their comfort level of, of, of stepping up and leading, whether it's been – Ty now, or, you know, I think what we've seen with, with Julius, um, Sean Chambers, Cleveland Thomas, I mean, we've got a bunch of those guys that have been these two-year guys. Um, yeah, he's he's really stepped up within that group uh, of, but that's quite a few young guys. So, um, appreciate whatever Ty must have said at, at halftime to make a, a impression on the guys, but I would imagine it was just a hey, we're not out of this, we gotta go, we gotta go compete, fellas, and, and um, ultimately that's what we did. 
Our family on our mom's side has a deep Montana history, especially stemming from Butte and Helena. And we are so proud. One of the things we are most proud of is to call ourselves Montanans. At Uptop Clothing, they have Montana made and Montana branded clothing for both men and women. Their Montana Till I Die collection is one of my favorite collections anywhere in the clothing world. And you can shop online and get the Montana Till I Die collection and all the other great gear that Uptop Clothing makes delivered right to your doorstep. Visit TeamUptop.com, and if you use the promo code SKYLINE15, you're going to get a discount on all your online ordering. TeamUptop.com, Uptop Clothing, reminding you to take a step back and enjoy them. Um, kind of, so then, a few new guys in the O-line, kind of right tackle, Cedric, Connor to guard. I guess what you kind of see from that group of Well, we played well enough to win. Uh, it wasn't uh, one perfect, and, and it wasn't going to be. I, I think looking at guys like Cedric and Titan really playing – their first extended time, um, they had both had some some plays here and there. Uh, you know, Titans go back over the course of two years. Just, uh, Cedric is a true freshman last year, but I, I think they both held their own. Um, you know, Connor moving in, I, I think that's just a, a sign of, of maturity in his, you know, uh, with his evolution, so to speak. You know, you play 12 games as a, as a redshirt freshman. You, you do the things he did last year, you know, and then we – we figured we could stretch him um, going back to the spring, playing him at guard a little bit for potential of this. Um, and our next best mode was to, you know, to put Titan and to put Cedric in rather than manufacture some other guards. So to put our, our you know, I think our best two linemen in Connor and Marcus at the guard positions and then be able to plug the next two best guys we felt like in a tackle was why we ended up um, – you know, looking a lot different on Saturday than we would have in our first depth chart we put out at the beginning of fall camp. But that's that's a credit to Coach Johnson getting those guys ready. It's a credit to those guys, you know, um, whether it is any one of those guys in the interior. Um, you know, Cole's mind going into this year is he was going to be a starting guard. And, and uh, you know, he had our two tackles, both sliding in play guard. It's, a, it's them understanding what we're trying to do. It's, it's that plan being clearly articulated to them by – Coach Johnson, myself, I guess, and those guys just say, hey, what's our best for the team? And um, I think they, you know, they performed admirably. We ran for a lot of yards, but I, I know there's there's plenty of uh, room for improvement, too. Um, and then, I'd say, you know, only big sky in the team playing last week, but players of the week, uh, Adam and McKay and Brandon. Yeah, I don't know how that works, I guess. Um, <laughs> they're up against each other, I suppose. Uh You know, I think in a given week where, our, where there are some other teams playing, especially early in the season, I hope – that Adam's performance would have uh, stuck out and, and he would have been in the mix because um, he did some phenomenal things. I, the run is what catches everybody's eyes, but he protected well. Um, that, that catch that he had, I think, uh, that got us inside the 20, got us a first down. And on that play, he had cut uh, a defender, cut block a defender. He did his top pass protection, rolled out, and really made a challenging catch. Um, so... And then I, I know Brennan's impact is significant on a day like that where they have to they fair catch two balls inside the 10. Um, he changed the field in both those instances, really kept them from wanting to go after another drive for the half. And he kept pounding the ball in the end zone, even with that wind in the second half, um, keeping keeping them to zero return yards in the game. It was all his doing, really. I mean, that's that's significant. And, you know, Kate, I think, was all over the place. Um, statistically, had a good game, and you know, that's what we expect of him. Um, you mentioned Titan. Um, what kind of is impressing most, just both physically as a, as an offensive line, but also mentally and being able to come back from all those injuries? Yeah, you think about Titan's journey. Um, he was signed and recruited when I got the job, but obviously, you know, frame wise, getting a chance to. I guess, get to know him a little bit over uh, Zoom initially, like like the prospects, I guess. And he came in that first fall, and you could see athletically again in that, at that frame, okay, we have this developmental type tackle that we want. Um, but then he ends up having uh, shoulder, double shoulder surgery that first fall. Um, played, I, I think it was just a game maybe that second year. And he put on all this weight at the same time. So he was he really wasn't what he ultimately could be. And then he fast forward again, injury problems last year. So I would say the same thing. And so now he's settled into this first stretch of, of football where, okay, the size, the weight, the height, all that stuff. And then this, this 
appreciation for being able to play the game is what is maybe the most uh, apparent thing with him. You know, a lot of guys get injured like he has. Um, they turn away from the game. They they don't want to keep finding a way, fighting through it. And, and that's the exact opposite of Titan. Um, he's so grateful for where he's at right now. And, and um, you know, that's a contagious type of personality to have on your football team, uh, just how much he appreciates this. And, you know, uh, if that's just how he was brought up or who he is. I mean, I think a lot of credit goes to a lot of people before he got here, namely his, his upbringing with his parents and his family. But, you know, um, really appreciate his perseverance to get to this point. And um, it was great, you know, for him to go out there and, and play the way he did. And, you know, um, hopefully that's just the beginning of a, a great run for him. And a kicker, uh, you see Casey's on the depth chart. So that, I'm curious about that. But then also Sanstead, Miles Sanstead, making all, all the people are your thoughts on, on that. Yeah. Um, Casey, unfortunately, it was the previous Saturday. Uh, had a... Slight quad. I don't even know what you want to strain. Let's just call it what it is, I guess. Uh, didn't know how serious it would be. Uh, tried to, to rehab and get him back out there through through Monday and Tuesday. I think it became apparent that you know, this is going to be a couple week deal. And and really, we hadn't determined who was going to kick, who was going to place kick at that point. I think both Casey and Miles, um, you know, rose to the top as far as our fall camp uh, competition went, and they were very similar in their their numbers. Um, you know, charting every day, um, having something uh, competitive most every day of fall camp. So I think when we had to turn to Miles, um, felt comfortable with that. And, you know, ultimately, um, you know, we only put him in the position to kick the five PATs. But again, as that game went, all, went along, that was easier said than done, too. So, you know, to have, a, you know, all those five go through and, you know, I think it was a great start from our place kicking perspective this year. We'll see where it continues to take us. Um, you know, chose not to kick a 49-yard field goal early in the first quarter. And that was, you know, I, I was going to kind of hold strong to the 30-yard line where we were going to we were gonna kick, and we weren't there. And we had a good play designed. Unfortunately, Taco fell on that fourth and eight. Um, I think he would have been wide open there. And, and that's the way it went. It wasn't that we ultimately can't make a 49-yarder with Miles. Um, that was just my thought process going in and, you know, um, we'll need him to build up that performance here in the second game. It's the first game uh, with the coordinators in their new roles officially. Uh, how did you see Bailey and Walker in those roles this weekend? Yeah, I thought on that side of things, um, I think our communication was good. I, I think how they saw the game, how we adjusted to some things, you know, um, you know, going back to what, what Victor had asked before about, predicting and some of those things along those lines. I think we thought that uh, Dan Pierre would run quite a bit more. Um, so if there was an early adjustment we made defensively, it was, okay, you know, after a bunch of series, he's not out here to run because that's really what he was out in the field to do and he was very effective with it last year. So adjusting some of our, our thought process there, I thought the defensive staff um, did a good job of just that. Uh, I thought they worked together well at halftime, again, to sort out the the – the heavier package that uh, that they went to. I, I thought offensively we were relatively clean with with most everything. Um, you know, all the calls never work. Uh, it's just the nature of of anything you do. And, and you know, the other teams obviously trying as well. And we were dealing again with that chasing point situation where it was really windy, which made that stretch kind of end of the third, beginning of the fourth, a little bit more complicated. But uh, I thought Coach Walker remained very calm through that stretch. Uh, you know, uh, how we function in the two minute, uh, large part of the credit does go to the guy calling, calling the plays and remaining, remaining calm up there. And, you know, um, in between series, being able to instill in Tommy, you know, a sense of confidence while, um, you know, wasn't always going uh, the way he wanted to was credit to Tyler too. So I guess at the end of the day, real happy with our first game from both of them. Uh, you talked about Casey a little bit, but any other injury up, injury updates going into Yeah, Elijah Elliott went down on a on a kickoff return. Um, you know, I, I it would seem like he's gonna be out for a few weeks. And you know, what the you know, is that he will he be back by conference? Uh I, I hope that's the case for him. But really that was about about it. I know Zach Black went out, then he went back 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 in. I don't think of the guys that ultimately didn't play in this game, we will get any back for this week. Um 
maybe hopeful for the next week as we come home. Um, I didn't see Miles Jackson on the two deep. Is there any update on him? Hmm. <laughs> he should have been the starting nickel. Should he not? He should be the starting nickel. Okay. Yeah. All right. Caden Dollar will be starting free like we started the game. Okay. That's what just wanted to so, maybe. On that. Oh, and then I guess JT, is there, is there any update? Yeah, I, we won't... Uh, uh, we won't be traveling this week. I again hopeful maybe for next week. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I guess it's just Utah Tech, uh, they still using their offense and they took their Yeah. You know, a, a team we played last year, they do return some guys that played in that game. Um more so on the defensive side. And, you know, you gotta look, I think strongly they brought in a couple transfer quarterbacks. So I think offensively just like last week, I think you got to see that's maybe more things uh, things start, you know, as far as um, how they want to build their offense. Uh, I know if, you know, if Deacon Hill from the transfer from Iowa is our starter, I would, I would suggest to lean more to a passing passing offense. Um, I know they they seem to like their skill based on, you know, what, what the – Fall prospectus and, and just some of the fall, fall preview stuff looks like. Um, so I, you know, pro style uh, to some degree, I suppose, but uh, more of a 50 50 type of offense because I do think they got some good running backs at the same time. Defensively, you know, you, you certainly got to look to what uh, Coach Anderson ran at Stanford. Um, you know, he was a longtime defense coordinator there and, and, and they were really good through that stretch. Uh, a lot of big bodies. I, I know that a little bit different than maybe, you know, what they looked like last year. Um, but definitely some guys that were on that field last year that did some good things against us. So, you know, um, we we can't practice against ghosts this week. We got to be confined with what we think we're going to get. And then like last week, be able to get in that game and, and make some adjustments um, to whatever they ultimately are doing. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any Town Pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. Coach Rod Zundel, I'm calling the game on ESPN Plus. Glad to have you in town this weekend. Hey, uh, expanding on what you just talked about, how do you specifically, how do you prepare for a team that has completely different schemes and and where do you go uh, to look at the film? Do you go to where Coach Stevens was at his school and Mon Monahan? I mean, how do you go about that specifically? I think that's what you do. Um, I know – I think defensively, I think we can go back and, and really, I think we can look at some stuff from Stanford. I, I think that, you know, because they were together at Stanford, Monahan and Coach Anderson, um, and, and try to pick up the pieces in between. Um, yeah, on the offensive side, it's a little bit of a search. You know, you um, you try to do the best you can as far as looking at, uh, you know, just how that's played out in previous years is at those different schools, I guess. And like I said, I mean, if we got to look at both quarterbacks um, and I just bring up Hill just because he's the more, more notable of the, the quarterbacks, but okay, let's say he's the quarterback. Let's study what he's done, what his strengths are. Um, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to exact particular formations and plays or anything like that, but it, uh, you know, at least gives you an idea what he's, uh, what his strengths are. Um, it said, obviously, you make your biggest improvement from game one to game two. Uh, personnel aside, scheme-wise and game planning, who has the advantage? You that has played a game and got it under your belt or Utah Tech that you haven't seen and don't know a lot about? I think you can look at that both ways. I do think there is advantage that we have played another opponent, for sure. We found out some things maybe about ourselves. Um but I, I do think they do they do have a distinct advantage and they can look and say, okay, this is this is who Montana State is, whether it's you know all of last season, um, certainly last week, uh, and really be able to dial that in. I think we did feel that a little bit last week with New Mexico is they had a pretty good sense. They had some good good thoughts as far as where they could 
maybe attack us. Um, and we were, we were guessing a little bit. So I think it works both ways. I don't know that it's distinct one way or the other. I, I do like the fact that we do have at least a mark. We have a game behind us um, and, and we need to get better this week and, and we need to, you know, raise the bar um, in all ways. Was there anyone on your team that going into game one that you weren't quite sure about or either uh, a certain player that really said, okay, that was impressive. We're happy with the way that turned out or a group of guys. Well, I would say our the two starting tackles um, felt good about it. Obviously, we put them out there for good reason, but that was their first uh, starts, and that's that's tricky when you're throwing two new guys out there. One's a, a redshirt freshman, and one he's a fourth year guy, but he has hardly played. Um, you know, I think on defense felt really good about the collective experience there. Um, there weren't too many holes in that experience. Um, I thought a couple guys, you know did quite well. I know we need to extend our depth a little bit more, um, you know, on that, on that side of the ball, um, you know, happy that we made all five of our place kicks um, from a guy that hadn't kicked in a game before, I guess, but no, I think a lot of the guys that did think the things that they did in the game where we were certainly counting on. Final question for me. Um, how do you keep your guys at an even level uh, highly ranked coming off uh one of the biggest wins in program history against an FBS school? Well, I think that's something we worked real hard in certainly in my three years is each one of these games counts the same. And that, that is not coach speak. We got to go about our, our business each week. And it really doesn't matter who we play. And I think we've, we've done a pretty good job of that over three years. You know, uh, you get too high for a particular opponent, you are naturally going to get, too low for for one. It's just the, the nature of the beast. And, and while we did appreciate the opportunity to play an FBS team on national television, and you know, I think there's uh, there's a lot to be said for that. I think you know uh, this next game is the next game, and it's, it's uh, the most important. And regardless of how our game against Utah Tech went last year, uh, there's a lot of new uh, new things to the equation, uh, new pieces of the equation, I guess, you know, new coaching staff, a lot of new players, um, new environment, you know, none of our players have, have played down in St. George. So um, you try to keep them on edge week in, week out to understand that the value of each game um, is just one. Um, I, I know as games goes on and you, you hopefully stack up a good record and the, the gravity of games maybe intensifies, but they all just count as one. And, and we got to treat this one really no different in that regard than last week. Thanks coach. Yep. Coulter. Yeah, Brent on that same note, obviously you, you spoke to the message to the players and the team so much extra exposure that comes with this. So how do you sort of make that a good thing and not a distraction? Well, yeah, we don't have a, a, an opportunity. I mean, we got Tim Brando doing our game. I mean, that doesn't come along every every weekend. I know that uh, it was funny. Brody and Tommy and myself did a sit down with them on Friday, and I think they both came out of it and said, "Boy, they really knew what they were talking about." I yeah, they are. You guys are professionals. They they uh, they got to do this. They got to re, you know, uh, recalibrate every week with a new new opponent, a new game. And you know, I said Tim Brando was originally on game day, and Brody kind of looked at me like. Holy cow. So that piece, um, you know, being on Sports Center, uh, you know, getting mentions, you know, across the board because we were, uh, you know, kind of a singular game and, and the way the games, the small number of games went last year, I think, or what last weekend, it was pretty unique. So I think that that's all good. And you got to appreciate the any kind of exposure at the national level that we do get. Um, but then be able to move on. And, and I, I hope a lion's share of our guys have played in big games. And and I think the way we're covered, even though it's more low, regional in nature, I think um, it's an important deal. So it's not like our guys aren't, aren't used to being covered, I guess. Um, so whether it's coming from a national perspective or a more regional perspective, I think they maybe don't always separate it. I think we do as coaches sometimes just because we know how important the, that reach can be for a football program, for our athletic departments, for our, our university. So, yeah, you just, I, I think you move on, you enjoy it all and you move on. And I, I know we, you know, we were in here at 7 a.m. this morning and I think everybody was able to to move forward, watch that film and, and go out and practice uh, this morning relative to Utah Tech.
I know you and I talked about Tommy just getting in the flow of the game. Um, what can you say to us about the way it sort of transpired for him? Because it seemed like the second half he was much, much better and more accurate, and but also just sort of turned into Mr. Clutch like he's prone to do. Yeah, I thought I thought he kind of uh... – Second quarter, I thought he had a pretty good stretch. I, I know we didn't end and we didn't score on that two minute drive um, that we had, but I thought he he did start making some plays. I started calling, you know, I calmed down. It's the wrong word, but just uh, the game was maybe slowing down a little bit. I think you know the bullets were flying fast at the beginning, and that's more. I I suppose that's something somewhat they were doing, but just you know he's he ready to go, wanting to make plays, and then you know when it came down to it at the end, there was a. It was a real calm, I, I do believe, about how he went out there. And, um, yeah, and he, I think he did what he would, would have expected to do, and I think he did what we would have expected of him um, in, in that moment. And, and um, that's that comes from experience, you know, uh, good experiences, bad experiences. You know, you think about last year, we had, you know, three of those losses, we had two-minute drives. I know he was quarterback in two of them. Um, uh, well, he's on the quarterback in one. He was on the quarterback in Idaho. I guess Sean would have been in uh, South Dakota State and North Dakota State. But even that Idaho game, uh, down three, touchdown to win. Um, we move it pretty pretty good, and we don't close it out. So I, I would hope that, you know, his thought process in preparing, you know, for this season, you know, the, you can call back on those those experiences. And I know we've gone through, you know, you try to practice and replicate those experiences as much as possible. So, you know, you, you, you're a seasoned vet for uh, all the good and the bad that's occurred in your career, and you hopefully learn lessons from from both sides of those those experiences. And and he's a he's a really good example of of always moving forward, but maybe not forgetting you know the things that have put him in this position at the same time. That leadership style, always sort of being forward thinking, and and also being so stoic, kind of like he is. Seems like it rubs off on the rest of the team. I mean, how important is that for the way you guys operate? Yeah, you know, offensive football in its uh, most extreme moments, its most intense moments, it's, I think that is the much better way to go about your business. You know, you uh, you think about the Joe Montana pointing out John Candy in the Super Bowl right before they go on that drive. Um you know, there's endless stories about quarterbacks going into that huddle. And um, that's the thing that the, the the other guys talk about. It's just, okay, we knew he could do it because of how he was, the demeanor he had, how calm. If you go out there and you're frantic, boy, those other guys, those other 10 guys are going to be frantic in their own right. So um, I think it's extremely critical to be able to execute in those tightest moments to be um you know, whether you believe it or not, just to be a guy that is outward, outwardly is displaying that. And that's who Tommy is anyway. So I, I, I'm certain that the, our guys had a real sense of confidence going down the stretch because of who was steering the ship. And Marcus Weir's got a lot of um, headlines the last couple months just because of all of his great accomplishments. But play, him playing at guard, it seemed like, even vaulted his level. I mean, you got national draft guys talking about how this guy is going to be a starter in the NFL soon and, and all these different things. But how much do you, how, how impressed were you with his ability to slide over to right guard? And I mean, I, I watched the game. He's dominant. He yeah. Uh, and it maybe is the long-term position that does suit him better at the next level for one. I know this last year, he played guard against North Dakota state. He hadn't practiced a lot of guard until that was at rush. Reimer was out. We slid him in. Um, we slid a Jacob Kettles and I think got tackle. So point being, we've been much more intentional. And it was because it was something Marcus in the offseason, I, I think, went to Coach Johnson. Was, if this is going to happen, I need some preparation. You know, so Marcus is uh, beyond being talented and strong and all that stuff. Um, he's a, a tremendous student of the game um, as much as any old lineman that I can think of that I've been around. And, and, you know, that's studying the game, but that's understanding, too, that I just can't slide in there and it's just going to happen because I'm a superstar. So he probably went through fall camp um, and even going back to spring ball, getting a, a really fair share of reps at right guard. Um, and we didn't know exactly how, was, how Cole's situation was going to play out. Obviously, we didn't know Justice was going to get hurt. So it was done for good reason. Um, but in large part, it was fueled by Marcus, you know, really making that request out of last year to say, hey, I need to 
I might prepare more inside. So um, I think that as much as just his ability allowed him to go in there and, and really shine uh, on Saturday because uh, it is two different worlds and it's it's different uh, type of guys you're blocking. It's different angles. It's all that stuff. And, you know, it appeared that he was absolutely ready for the task. You mentioned the little things that Adam Jones did in that game. And it, when he came on the show a couple weeks ago, he was talking about how one of the hardest parts of D1 football for him was like the pass blocking stuff like he wasn't really required to ever do when he was in high school. How much does that help a guy get on the field at a young age um, at that position? Oh, it's huge. You know, when you can be an every down guy, um, it it's either going to happen for you fairly early or it might not happen. I, I think there's a, there's a piece to understanding the game that doesn't come to every running back, seeing a big picture, seeing understanding protections, even having the knack for protecting isn't uh, always a, an acquired skill. So, you know, I think his we knew his receiver skills were really good. He, he demonstrated that his ball catching in high school was was there. Um, I think a lot of people maybe even looked at him as a receiver. Uh, when we saw him as a running back, in, in part because of all the things that he brought to the table, he'd been physical when he would play defense. Um, so, you know, he's just he's been on a different pace than most running up young running backs with obviously his ability to run is one thing, but just his, uh, his understanding, um, you know, his ability to put the weight on he's put on. I think it's just, uh, it, you know, his ascension, I, I, this just didn't happen. We've kind of seen this all through the, the calendar year. Um, thought he had a great spring and that was again, setting himself up to be this every down back. Uh, so Excited for him. You know, I, I think excited for a program that he's done the things that he's done. And, you know, I, I, it's, it's our hope, and I'm sure his, that this is just a start. And last thing for me, just playing in another hot one. I know that you guys are sort of acclimated to this at this point, but uh, what's the dynamic like just going on two straight, relatively long road trips to open the season? Yeah, different for sure. Um, and at the same time, I think, Going through last week's experience, uh, making that trip, and we had a, a pretty flawless trip as far as air travel and all that kind of stuff. Um, we dealt with the heat pretty well. Now the second half with the wind and the, the weather changing wasn't as extreme as the first half had been. So I, I know looking at this week, um, you know, they put this game at, at 8 p.m. for a reason. I think the high in the day is going to be uh, 100 plus I, I, game time is going to be what it is. The sun obviously won't be the same factor that it was, you know, in the, the first part of uh, the New Mexico game. But I do think it helps having these back to back. Um, you know, I think for our fans to have our home game, be our, our, our first home game, be our third game is is unusual. But, uh, you know, by the time we come home um, that next week, I think they'll have a good sense of who we are. And I know we traveled really well. To Albuquerque, I hope it's the same this week. I, I, I've heard a lot of fans tell me they were going to make a, a double trip of it. You know, um, you know they're down south anyways. Uh, just move a little west. So I, I, I hope we have a big crowd there, and and that always fuels us on the road. So, you know, it is what it is. It's our schedule, and we'll take it on. I do think last week's travel, the heat, and all that will definitely help us out uh, this second time around. It's not going to be too bad. It's going to be about 94 degrees uh, at kickoff at 8 o'clock Saturday. You'll enjoy that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was hot that, that that first half of last week, so we're uh, at least got that under our belt. Cash One Pond has the most extensive inventory of any pawn shop in western Montana. Whether you're in the market for firearms, power tools, bows, video game consoles, or sunglasses, Cash One Pond is the best deals around. And now Cash One Pond gives you the ability to, to shop online from anywhere. Make CashOnePond.com part of your shopping habits. Also make sure to download the Cash One Pond app. Cash One Pond, Missoula's, Cash One Pond, Missoula's premier pond shop located on Roller Coaster Road on the way to the Y.